Is this basically how I dropped it off? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what did you actually do? We just gave it a quick scuff and paint, getting ready for paint. <laughs> we had to re-blast all the rivets because they were all rotten. Fix some minor dents here and there. And other than that, it was pretty clean. <laughs> I, I don't see too, too much. No. And then uh, down below, the little lip was rotten? Yeah, we cut it all off and we got new panels made for it. We're gonna rivet them on. And then a little bit of fiberglass work on the corners? Yeah, the corners were all broken and brittle, so we re-glassed them all and they're all primed and ready to go. Okay, all right, so priming and then roof. The roof is trouble, right? The roof is trouble. And then I gotta get rubbers from Kenworth yet. And, and new glass cut. And new glass cut but we're on our way and you are deleting those three on the top there, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. The three holes because it doesn't have to leave. Yeah, we're doing a different visor. So visor's 12 inches, so it's coming down to something like that. <laughs> and then a 22 inch bumper on the front. Should look really good. Right on, so we're on schedule and within budget? Uh, schedule, yes, budget, no. <laughs> That's blow. <laughs> All right, we'll see what happens. Here we go. Roll this underneath. Rich, this is the roughest one yet. No, it's fine. No, it's the no roughest problem. one yet. No, it's not. It's fine. There's lots of videos on how to stretch a frame. We're gonna see about just putting the cab and the engine right onto this girl. Did you get your shoes? All right, so I got my box of airbags delivered. We bought these Yokohama Super Steels. Bolt this thing together and make it look like a truck frame. Here we go. This tank is actually uh, well, six, eight, eight inches longer than the other tank. We're looking at some bass here. Okay, so the roof, the issue is all of these cracks. Okay, so this is the flywheel for the um, cat. And as you can see, it was only rubbing a little bit here and a little bit here, and it wasn't even touching here. That's why the truck would barely move. It was slipping like crazy. Um, I could feel a little ridge right here. So this flywheel was worn down already. And we are going with a six pad clutch. So this will hold a lot more uh, torque than the original three pad that was in there. Uh, but the problem is the center section is also bigger. So this doesn't fit in this tiny little hole. To get a flywheel for the 3406 is super expensive and also um, extremely hard to get. I got some prices and zero availability. So I'm sure there's some kicking around, but for the time being, I'm going to have the machine this lip out down, down a little deeper so that this can physically fit inside this opening here. Now, I also got to keep in mind that the bolts um, are this big and for some reason this was already hitting too. I mean, you can see that, that was from uh, the old, that's how I got it out of the cat. So this can't hit these bolts. So the only options we would have is to machine these down a little bit, uh, mill them down so that the um, bolts are a little bit recessed or shave a little bit off the top of the bolt. But I'm gonna drop this off to get machined and get the fittings in the transmission cooler done at the exact same time for the F350 and we'll see what they say. Um, when you machine a flywheel, you can't just machine the mating surface where the clutch is, you also have to machine where it bolts to because otherwise it changes the angle of your fingers and you won't get your full clutch adjustment. Keep in mind too that it takes about 45 minutes to pull the transmission with the cab over. It is about the easiest thing in the world. So I don't mind messing with this flywheel. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, in the meantime, I'll keep my eye open for the proper flywheel. Here we go. Turn 
turned out really nice. Happy with that. Nice that the trailer's easy to move. Got a bunch of prime parts. Barely dry. Put it in the shop already. All right. All right, so the last video you guys saw us try to pull some dents out of the Kenworth tank. A couple good suggestions. Pop, we should have filled it up with air. Dents, why didn't you think of that? You can't see air leaking. No, 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 I can pop the dents out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, James Van Tool, who does marine transport out of Wellenport, uh, mentioned that he had this Kenworth tank for us, that we could have this tank. So him and his boys got a little tour of the shop and dropped off this tank. Now it's in, it's in pretty good shape, other than after dropping the tank off, um, just started measuring it and looking at it. This tank is actually uh about well, six eight eight inches longer than the other tank now i want to move the tanks forward and have them end at the end of the cab so it's one big square box um i know that there's a couple suggestions because of weight and stuff we probably won't have these tanks full it's like a couple thousand liters of fuel and we won't burn that often enough and before you know it somebody's siphoning the tanks because they're full of fuel so yeah, more than likely we'll, we'll run them half um, so we're also moving the weight of the batteries back and we're shortening the tanks up a bit so i want that look of the tanks forward the issue with this tank that he dropped off is that it's pretty pitted just in one stupid spot uh the, these are these are pretty pretty significant um, and the other tank is okay. Uh, it's just all dented up. It's got pitting, but not as bad as this. So what we're actually doing is taking the 13 inches, 13 inches from end to here, and we're cutting this off and then shortening the other tank, which eliminates the strap on the other one and puts the weld right underneath our strap. So, um, now we have two non-leaking tanks. We're gonna mess them both up. If we, if it doesn't work, we got zero tanks. But we're gonna cut this and then cut the other tank. So behind the strap and then weld this piece to the other one. And uh, that eliminates two problems at once. Gets rid of the pitting, shortens the tank and no dents. Three problems, look at that. <laughs> Solving problems all day. Here we go. Well, we're gonna try to cut these tanks apart and weld them together. I don't particularly know if they're the same aluminum, like 40, 43 here, maybe 40, 27, maybe there, I don't know. They're quite old, so might be a little bit uh, contaminants in there. Oil, grease, we're gonna cut it, so it's gonna contaminate it again. And uh, we're just gonna make it work. <laughs> so, so you're saying even the zip discs, like they leave contaminants in there and doesn't? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you... Anything that touches the bloody thing is contaminated now. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I got you, Vince. I got you. <laughs> oh. Should I clean the blade? <laughs> it's got Lexan on it from the Audi. <laughs> My boss used to cut tin all the time. We just put the blade backwards. backwards yeah. yeah. That's what I remember doing, soffits. I'll... Yeah, yeah. I used to, I'm like, you can do that? Yep, yeah, you can do that. <laughs> Cut a big stack at once. <laughs> I'm gonna try a blade forward. It's a nice sharp Diablo blade. So we'll try that and then go from there. Here we go. <laughs> Just another typical day. <laughs> this nice cologne, it's only buck thirty-nine a liter. <laughs> Does it almost make sense to weld like a little tab 
Yeah. Um, seats, um, like four, and then just ratchet strap it down and pull it tight. Yeah, yeah. It all, all works. Yeah. Because we just weld the tabs on the bottom to center the top section, and then the one one we just kind of folded in a bit, so we welded one on the top section there. And actually, that's. That's not bad for a skill saw. Vince can. Says he can take care of that, no problem. Nice. <laughs> what do you think, Vince? I think it's excellent. <laughs> a lot easier than a 30 ton tank. <laughs> That's what you used to do? Yeah. Yeah, but that was steel, right? All steel, stainless, and uh, carbon. So, okay. no aluminum tanks. <laughs> Get to do a lot of these with a junkyard, though. So. <laughs> this one went really well. <laughs> So I goofed again. I didn't notice that the fitting was completely gone in the old tank, um, and they just JB welded the snot out of it. <laughs> so we just quickly um, grabbed the super hot. We just cut the old one out, and then uh, cut the one out from the new tank. We're gonna weld it right over top, and nobody will ever, ever know. You're a good man, Vince. <laughs> Back in Newport, a full, a full two weeks after they painted it. And they haven't even stripped it yet. In, in their defense, a massive snowstorm, accidents all over the place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they told me if it snows, we're not touching it. So um, we're here today to just do a little bit of work on the roof. We're gonna lay a layer of fiberglass on it. And we got Adam back. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Brought my tools. <laughs> Got a so flat some, head with a bend in it and some, a plastic stick. Some comments about not having suction, cu suction cups on the uh, Silverado. Oh, so. I know. I, I, I don't get on the road, so I just start to get, forget what I need. Everything's done at, in house at Frog. Use them all comfortable. I'm in my own little world. Yeah, and, and then I drag them all over the country. Go here, go there, yeah. do this, do that. He did, in the F350, you, you, he remembered his suction cups. But anyway, oh, yeah. we're looking at some bass here. What do you think? This, it's gonna be easy to come out, I think. And then uh, I'm gonna be taking, I'm gonna be sizing up the glass, measuring it, stenciling it, whatever. Uh, so this one's cracked. I see that. And this one's foggy. So this is again from the oil filter. No, and at some point, <laughs> at some point somebody took the cab and forgot it. But, so at least it's flat. Uh. Pull the center out and see where we end up. That's just generic center, This is a right? generic lock ring. Yeah. Um, there's various sizes available, but this is a pretty small one. I'll walk now with the plastic stick and loosen as much as I can up, and then we're just gonna have to push it out. Time to put the camera on. Yes! <laughs> Hi, mashita. Finished. Can I go home now? Yeah. Well, you gotta stall a little bit because I have pizza at like 12. So, what you were saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah so the, 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 the rubber, the gum, I don't see it cracked and it's pliable. So, there's no, I don't see any issue reusing this. No? How does the fiberglass look? Good. There's no rust on the fiberglass. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We hate rust repair. Bueno. Okay, so that's a uh, laminated glass too. I wasn't sure. I thought maybe this might be tempered or this is a modern cab. <laughs> for its time. <laughs> yeah, for its time. So, 
Doable? Yeah, we got the windows out. Didn't damage them any further than they already were, like that there. And uh, the gaskets are in really good shape. I'm gonna clean, take them back to the shop and clean them up and uh, and, uh, and and prepare them for reassembly. Right on. Yeah, solid. Need it, man. Thanks, man. Mm. We will see you in a couple of weeks. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate it. Okay, so the roof, we actually were able to pull the horns off. When I did the front, I broke every one of these mounts. This one, luckily the horns came off, so we're good. The issue is all of these cracks. Now, I'm gonna poke my head on top of Phil's cab. I don't remember what this looks like when we first got it, but working with Tim from Industry Garage and Ryan uh, when we did the carbon fiber on the Audi, he said, not a big deal. Um, put a layer of resin on this. Put a fresh layer of mat, fiberglass mat on it with one more layer of resin. Put a little resin on first and let it sink into the cracks because when you put the mat on it, it'll kind of pull the resin up. So we'll blow this off. Um, no really way to prep this or to, to do anything with it. It's really rough from the sandblasting and the fiber, the resin should go into the cracks and hold it nice and tight. So we'll try that, cut around the plates that are holding up random things inside the cab and uh, see what we can do. What do you want? Which one? Middle of fame. Your middle of fame? Make it fun of me, make a video. I still hate making videos in front of people. So how are you gonna paint this? Dangle from a forklift? It would work. Drive nice and slow inside the booth. Yeah, just need to get a big enough rope, thick enough rope. Yeah. I don't know how good Josh is running the motor. Yeah, he's pretty useless with anything, tool wise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's gonna be tricky. We'll get her. Yeah. Even if I gotta narrow the, the fan and kind of just tickle it from yeah, there. Like... Once it's gone, I don't wanna look at it again. That's true. <laughs> good, such good memories of all my projects. Time spent together. I have tons of good memories. Every time they leave, it's like the greatest memory I have. <laughs> well, talking it over with Industry Garage, came up with the best solution to fix this roof is to put another fresh layer of fiberglass on top. So we're gonna put the resin on and then lay the mat and then put more resin on. The issue is these plates are in the way and the lights. So I got to cut around it. So roll it all up and unroll it like we did with the Audi, which seemed to work okay. We'll try that. We're going to cut all the holes out of it first, just because it gets really, really messy. Kind of get one shot. I hope this works. The first time I'm trying this, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> Here we go. take the little um, wrinkles out right away. And then all those little cracks are hidden. And another layer of resin, that will soak in down underneath here and it'll be just fine. Here we go. Could be calling me master though. It would make sense. 
So what we're doing is trying to scan and see if we can get a solid color um, and then just pricing it both ways because this is really nice. It's also really expensive. So yeah. yeah, but if you're going matte, if we're going matte, but yeah, it's not it. So, so this is the matte and I think just having them side by side, I like the clear way better. So then, then the price is probably worth it again. So they're gonna price it both ways and then we'll make a decision, but that'll basically be the color on it with the black and with a little bit of white and chrome. Oh, nice. What do you think, honest opinion? The colors? Yeah. They're all right. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> no, it's good. I don't, I don't like the matte. I feel like you're wasting all this beautiful pearl. If you go matte, you don't see it. Right. So if we're going matte, I think we need to pick a solid red that's okay. similar. Uh, if you're gonna go with shiny clear, then I like this, it's nice. Okay. I mean, we did a purple Mustang. We did a pink pickup. Yep. We might as well do a burnt orange truck. It's, is it, I, I'd go closer to cop, well, I guess, it's burnt kinda, orange, copperish. Yeah, it's yeah. not a burnt orange, it's in between. Yeah, I'll take it out in sunlight, let the other guys look at it. You wanna go for me? Sounds good. Thanks, man. No problem. All right, so that's it from Newport. Uh, they're gonna, we're gonna wait for that to dry. They're gonna buzz that down and then probably put a spray putty on there and then blend that into the sides and then paint that. Got a little bit to fix on the fiberglass on the front here yet. They shaved, they shaved that down. Uh, they pulled all the rivets out. And then we'll, um, just a little skim coat over that. Um, and then a couple cracks in the fiberglass around for the rubber. So we're gonna fix that at the same time. So yeah, back at the shop. We'll uh, carry on with the engine. I think my flywheel's done, so we'll get into that. Here we go. Okay, so we got our flywheel back for the 3406. And um, he ended up taking about 20 thou off of the surface. So again, whatever you take off on the mating surface of the discs, you have to take the same amount off of the mating surface where the pressure plate bolts to, otherwise your fingers will be off. Uh, they machined the center hub out so that it fits our bigger disc. And then they had to take about a quarter inch off here um, to drop the bolts down deep enough um, so that it doesn't hit. Now he gave me about an eighth of an inch clearance and that's about the distance of the disc, maybe a little bit more, but uh, the clutch will be slipping long before they hit. Um, I'll probably take about a quarter inch off of the end of the bolts. We'll stick those in the um, uh, lathe and we'll just shave the same amount off on each bolt. We want to keep those bolts balanced and then um, so you can't take more off of one threads than the other. That way they don't bottom out in the hole and my whole fly will come off. So, um, I would put that on, I would bolt that on and feel really good about it, but it's kind of a snowstorm outside. That's not bad, it's settled down a little bit, but we got a ton of snow. So, um, nobody wants to go out in that. So, you can see the truck there is under a tarp and outside. Now, I've replaced every single uh, fuel line, oil line, airline on the engine side of it so vnr has a hydraulic shop so i didn't record any of that because i usually just take two or three hoses with me at a time and then get them made whenever i was driving by on the way to newport um, visiting for something asking questions um they have to okay because we're halves on the truck we got to okay the colors and that so um try to time those with lunch times and uh, beer at the end of the day. Well, we'll get into the crimping the hoses a little bit later. I still have lots to make. I put that outside and we've got the square body inside out of the snow. We're gonna prep this whole thing to get ready to go back on the tank. The tank outside is ready, probably frozen to the ground. So basically we're going to prep this in the next video. That will be the next video on this channel. We're gonna make it so that the truck is able to tip up hydraulically. We're going to make room for the four cylinder under the hood. I'm gonna make an entire console um, with handles and shifters and rewire the whole thing so that we can shift every gear inside with an H pattern with uh, four hydraulic cylinders connected to each other. And then we've got a nice double din there with a backup camera so I can put the camera on the transmission so I can see exactly what gear I'm in. I did a bunch of work to it already. Tried to see about the original wiring if that was any good, but it's not. 
but we'll get into all of that in detail in the next video. Um, I'm on this now, and then as soon as this is ready to go back on the tank, we'll plop it on the tank, um, and then pull the transfer truck back in again. Hopefully the cab will be done by then, and we can put the cab back on it again. Then the truck is not leaving the shop until it's driving out under its own power which shouldn't be that difficult. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Uh, hopefully that was enough progress on that to satisfy you guys for this video. Remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. Here we go.